All right, real quick before this video starts, make sure you follow me at 415 Kodai on Twitter and also GFX Comet. And we also got a Discord server. So uh, if you're interested, join. And I hope you enjoy this video. Hey, what is up, everybody? It is me, Aditya from GFX Comet here. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do advanced highlights. And as far as advanced go, I wouldn't really say that's 100% the correct term. For me, it's actually easier. It's all really just dependent on your skill level. So a big, big issue I ran into when I first started using Photoshop for all my UIs, because for a lot of you guys who don't know, I actually did only make UIs at Illustrator at one point. And the main issue I faced was whenever I was trying to make a highlight, I would always have the issue with how to get the perfect shape with the pen tool. I always struggled with the pen tool. And today I'm gonna show you guys maybe a little bypass for that. And this is a really short, quick tutorial on how to actually do this. So stay tuned if you wanna see something that'll boost the quality of UIs by far and just learn it really, really quickly. So to jump right ahead, I grabbed a button I made from a tutorial I'm making. Uh, hopefully I already got uploaded but it's for the Bloxburg recreation tutorial I just grabbed a button I made for there all it is is a simple gradient with a drop shadow and I just put it together really nicely I guess all right real quick just to let y'all know we have a uh, completely new website as you can see here so if you hit shop we have all the categories so if you go to user interface as you can see and uh, the process now should be a lot smoother to download and uh, purchase products you have a search bar up here and if you want to log in sign up but uh yeah with that being said make sure to check our website at gfxcomma.com hope you enjoy this video and so i think this is a perfect example to where we could use it so a very common issue we face with the pen tool is making curves and so let me show you guys an example so it could be on here we try to make this corner and we end up with something much, much wider like this. And we end up with jagged edges, all these errors. And when you're first starting out UI, you don't even have the fully correct knowledge on how to actually deal with that. And so I'm gonna show you guys a little bypass to that, a little trick I learned from Edmund himself on how to actually do this with a lot less effort but still get the same good look so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our brush and for the brush i just went ahead and used a simple brush we're gonna turn the hardness all the way down to zero and we're gonna increase the size to just about this this is a perfect height we just it varies on the ui color so as you guys see it's really just a really thin line with a very wide glowing effect and i actually used to do glowing effects with this as well believe it or not um this paintbrush tool is going to become your best friend for when you first starting and what i want to do is i want to select the color white and i'm just going to go on here and i'm going to freehand this and for this we can do a simple curve right here and we could do another simple curve right here and this is what I like to call just a standard glow and you guys don't see it now but whenever you turn down the opacity and fix it up just to look right you guys will see it then and this just gives a little more cartoony vibe and you can throw on a ton of other things with this so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move this up to the top And I'm gonna make this a folder and just call it effect one. And so now let's duplicate this and let me go ahead and show you guys the next effect. Let's bring just one layer down. <laughs> and it's fine. We'll make a new layer on here. And hopefully this time we can actually <laughs> Now make that mistake, dragging folders. And we're just gonna turn down the brush just a bit. And now I'm gonna show you guys a top highlight. This is a very good way to make sure they notice 
the UI, if especially it's a button or something really important that you want them to click on, this is a good way. So all it really is is just straight, straight line. I'm doing this while holding enter on my keyboard. And now we just do the same thing. Mess with the opacity until you believe it is okay. As you see, we have these little slide slashes. Uh, if you guys want, you could make it a bit smaller. I think that'd look better. I just kind of messed up on the brush size. I think this brush size for the top stroke is perfect. And now what we can do is we can actually try both on the next one. I'm just gonna keep separating these just so you guys get a good idea of how they look similar, how they look different, things like that. Perfect, and we go down, drop this one down, name it Effect 3, let's name this Effect 2, Effect 2, and now on Effect 3, let's just duplicate another layer on top, make sure it's on top or else it will not show above this block that we're working on. And let's make the stroke small this time. Just have a simple, nice curve look on the other side as well. And we can do another layer on top of that just to separate it. And we can, we can raise the brush size just a bit, a little more than that. And do that very clean looking white line and we can run it through and the nice thing about doing it in layers is that we're able to adjust it with the arrows however you guys want to do that we can adjust the individual highlights and we just throw these both on there And you might see that little overlap and a good way to avoid that actually is just simply straight out cut the top one and you could actually do this as well another way to not have to cut down on the effects if you really want both is transforming oops selecting the top bar transforming it and just bringing it this way just before it really touches or hits anything I think it's a little too bright it's a little too showy and we could do this and since I am doing this on a gradient it doesn't really stand out as much it doesn't really pop as much but once you do it on a flat color you guys will really begin to see how it sort of acts like a gradient almost but just for a specified area and we could totally stack this with a few shapes. We just get a ellipse, for example. We hop it on there. Uh, we do not want a stroke for this. We do not want a stroke. And all we'd really do is drag it on here, hold down Alt, do that. Lower down the brightness or the opacity. Do this and we have a nice looking cartoony UI over here. And we could throw on anything really like, let's do, yeah, this is a fine font. We could do, click here. We have a nice cartoony font to suit the theme. So I just showed you guys pretty much how layers stacked on top of each other and how we can implement these highlights all together to make one really good looking UI. So as you guys see this flat color, I mean, it looks good, but it's not really there. Just the top bar, it's starting to look a bit better. But once we do both effects topped with an opa topped with the ellipse with the stroke down, and we can even turn this a bit more down, actually. It's really up to you guys, whatever you think looks good. I think this is a fine thing. And we go from having something really bland to having something that looks much more cartoony, something that looks way more interactive and that pops out. You can see a lot of advanced games that have this and it's really much more simple than a lot of you guys think. 
Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any other suggestions, leave them down in the comments and we'll pick a few to make videos on. Also, join the Discord chat and you can interact with other members of the GFX Comet family and you can maybe even DM one of us a suggestion for a video. If you are interested in purchasing any UI assets or you just want something to practice off of, check out our store down below, gfxcomet.com. Other than that, guys, peace.